can be, and it can be a thing. So vestibular dynia, the vestibule surround turns into the vagina, just to give you a general idea. So initial penetration with intercourse or a pelvic exam can elicit pain and create chronic pain in that area. Um, I've seen a lot of it be related to hormonal issues. So a brand new breastfeeding mom with low estrogen and postmenopausal low estrogen. Um, Addressing that side as well as the side of using a pelvic wand and dilators to train the body and your nervous system response because that's a really huge thing with chronic pelvic pain um, is we don't want to feel pain and when we're in an intimate situation and that happens, that elicits a feeling that your body remembers and on the next attempt and the next attempt. And learning how to downtrain those muscles to be able to relax so that you can work through that is a really, really... When you experience chronic pain, your response is to create tension, whether you consciously notice it or not. And then in anticipation of that happening again from your previous experience, you upregulate tension. And when we do that and we restrict our breathing because we're fearful and it's normal, is we choose that opposite nervous system pathway of that fight or flight, which upregulates heart rate, blood pressure, cortisol, and which pain pathways we take. So you address the, the physical things of tissue quality and hormones and breathing and tension and mobility. And you can't forget about the other part of we need to reteach our body it's safe and it's okay and how to breathe. When something comes to that vaginal entrance and your response is to like, you know, create tension and it's normal. Can you breathe and relax and can you change that experience is really important too. Yes, yes, you want those levels, levels to stay consistent. Stay consistent. So, so um, I take I mine take every single day regardless of what I'm doing and regardless of the type of workout um, or if I'm not working out. I used to put it in with my protein shake. What I've been doing for a while now is I put it in with water and my electrolytes first thing in the morning. And sometimes I get real wild and I throw my magnesium bisglycinate powder in there with it in the morning. So I'll drop a link to the ProMix one at its largest size. The price per serving is the best value. So if you know you're going to buy it and take it every single day, um, per serving is one of the best values I've seen for quality from a company. Okay, so you want to do open chain and closed chain internal rotation mobility and strengthening. So when you on your hands and knees and pull the knees apart and your toes come in and your heels come out, you're opening for the posterior pelvic floor. Mobility like that and many others, as well as strengthening, so a band around the ankles or in side line. Then you want to do closed chain strengthening. And so if we could create internal rotation toward that foot, so you bias a little more rotation, you open that sits bone. So you strengthen to hold that space open. Super important. As well as if your glute med and glute max are weak, muscles underneath it, like piriformis and obturator, might be doing more work than they need to. So really pushing glute med. I just shared all of those side plank variations, as well as things like squats, lunges, hip thrusts, all of those to build up glute strength. All right, last one. Um, and I'm gonna, I am gonna make this into a formal post, so I know you're gonna say you wanna do this again. And um, if you struggle with breathing, standing up, this is gonna kind of encompass all of that. So I've mentioned before, what is good posture, or what is neutral if you're looking for it and you're not sure. It's ear, shoulder, hip are in line. So if we're tucked under, you're not getting that line if you're too far forward. But if you're like, I don't know what that feels like in my own body. You can use your pelvis as a landmark. And so we see the bony nubs right here and then your pubic bone. If your hands are on both of those locations in a neutral position, your hands will be in the same plane. If you come too far back, your pubic bone will push out further, your hands will be in the same plane. If you spill too far forward, then your thumbs and the tops of your hands will be forward of that of your pubic bone. Okay, so ear, shoulder, hip, slight curve in the low back, belly is relaxed. So if I have my hands on those locations, pubic bone, ASIS, just think of those bony nubs. Okay, I have a little triangle and mapping out my bony landmarks. Uh, they are in the same plane here in a neutral position. Oh, can't see that with that. 
If I'm too far forward, you can see now that my pubic bone is behind my thumb. And if I go too far back, the opposite way, you can see the opposite where the pubic bone comes forward. So that's always a really good quick self check of what is neutral in your own body, as well as even distribution of weight through your feet. So you want to feel base of big toe, baby toe, feel your heel and your edge of your arch. You feel yourself grounded evenly through your foot and then find those alignment cues.